Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Tonight we are reviewing the Beaver Lab Astronomical Telescope. Um, I've heard a lot of uh, bad stuff about it, but I do think you should not judge a book by its cover. Do not let your opinion of things be judged by what other people say. So I wanted to give it a shot for myself and see what it was actually capable of doing. So that's what we're going to do tonight. We're going to check it out on the moon, Jupiter, and the Orion Nebula as well and see what it's actually able to do. So stick around. Let's find out. All right, so after you have the app open, uh, you'll want to turn on your Beaver Lab telescope, and it's pretty easy. This is, in fact, a detachable camera, um, so that is pretty handy. You just go ahead and plug it in to charge it uh, whenever you're done. Um, just getting it installed is pretty easy. You just go ahead and push it in and turn to lock it in place. Let me do that because I can't do that with one hand. There you go. Locked into one place. You put the little finder scope on. It has just your classic little red dot finder. Um, and I'm already starting to see some things about it um, that perhaps is the reason it's gotten kind of a bad rep. Um, I think it's kind of fallen to hit the wrong audience and not your traditional you know, astronomer crowd. The people that love the journey of looking for the objects with their own eyes and uh, not really relying on these digital technology to capture these objects for a little bit more of the physical objects and less of the gassier objects. Sort of more things like the moon and Jupiter uh, than things like galaxies that are, you know, more for advanced astrophotographers. This is for more of someone who just wants to look at stuff. Uh, people who want to find things themselves, that's definitely more what this is for. And as an example of that, let's take a look of the moon. You go ahead and open it up. As you can see, it's connected by Wi-Fi. So you don't have to have any kind of wired connection. That's pretty handy. You do your start to observe, and then, obviously, of course, you want to make sure you have your lens cap off. I'm going to set this to auto, gain to auto, and I'm just going to find the moon real quick. There it is. And let's check it out in regards to detail on how good this is. So, uh... All I have to do, also, obviously, is turn off the auto exposure because uh, the auto exposure is not the best. Once it's off, go ahead and find the moon again. All right, there it is. We turn on the exposure again, and we can kind of center it on there. Now, it does not have autofocus, so you do have to use this little manual focus thing here. Um, so it's definitely more of your traditional uh, type astronomy, of course. This is what you would see through, you know, your little normal Newtonian. Um, but through a normal Newtonian, you don't have a little built-in camera, which I think is a cool thing about it. You can just go ahead and take your pictures through here. Um, the buttons are somewhat sensitive for my fingers, probably because my fingers are kind of frozen. Um, but it can take pictures. Uh, it can record video and then they have the gallery as well. There's a bunch of different settings that you can use to kind of play around with it. Uh, you can bump up the sharpness some. Please excuse the dog. So you bump the sharpness. You can kind of bump up the contrast. Or lower down the contrast to get better features on the moon. And honestly, I think it's pretty cool. Of course, it's not the best lens. Um, you can kind of see a lot of that chromatic aberration around the moon. So it's definitely more of your beginner's type of telescope. Um, I would recommend it to those who are obviously first getting into astronomy, those who are trying to find their love for it, um, people who want to take pictures of it but don't feel like doing through the whole processing and uh, the auto go-to stuff. No, this is more of your classic manual telescope, which I do think is pretty cool. Uh, because I feel like a lot of companies have kind of drifted away from that. Uh, most companies nowadays are more giving the instant gratification and not the classic traditional astronomy feel, which is more of what the Beaver Lab uh, is looking like um, they were leaning towards. So it is, it's pretty fun to use. Um, I will say I, I do enjoy it. It looks like the details uh, are pretty good. The camera is pretty good. Um, the battery does last quite a long time, I have noticed. Um, I did try it 
a couple nights ago and the battery lasted for me for about four hours so the battery lasts a long time um, it's the camera does seem to be pretty good of course I wish that the camera was interchangeable um, but this is in fact the specific uh, Beaver Lab uh, camera so you can't really use anything other than that uh, but I do think it's pretty cool uh, we saw the moon I'm sure you'd like to see these things like planets as well so let me go ahead and find Jupiter for you all right so as you can see Jupiter is right there the details do seem pretty good for you know this kind of telescope the telescopes such as the dwarf 2 and the sea star aren't really able to get uh, very good details on planets like this let me go ahead and recenter it real quick all right so again as you can see it is able to pull out an exceptional amount of detail uh, with Jupiter I would lower down the saturation because it looks quite blue for some reason um, but those who are obviously initially getting into astronomy seeing things like this is going to be a pretty cool uh, being able to take pictures of it being able to take videos of it uh, being able to share it with uh, friends and family that's definitely something that's uh, gonna attract a lot of people so I do find that pretty neat um, the Beaver Lab Telescope does have the appropriate amount of focal length uh, for planets like this. Of course, if they had uh, a bigger lens, perhaps uh, a little bit of a better lens, um, more focal length, we could get a bigger, better zoom. Of course, that would bump up the price of this a whole lot. Um, it, it is pretty affordable at the moment, but I do think it's pretty cool what it's able to do with planets. Uh, again, something that Dwarf, Dwarf Lab and Sea Star S50 are not able to do um, is planetary. Uh, at least in regards to just viewing. So I do think it's pretty cool what Beaver Lab was able to do with that. Now, I do have one more target in mind, actually. Um, and this is, in fact, the deep sky object. And it's one that we all know, the Orion Nebula. So I'm going to bump everything back up to its original uh, auto. And we're going to look for the Orion Nebula with this and see what it can do with that. All right, so as you can see, the Orion Nebula is right there. Um, it is quite what I expected, uh, just a very fuzzy blob. You can see the four stars there right in the center. Now, that's what you would see like in a theory telescope. You would not actually be able to see uh, much in regards to this nebula if you were to look through even like a six inch Dipsonian telescope. So the fact that we're able to pick this up, um, it is of course one of the brighter deep sky objects. Uh, I would be interested in seeing what it can do with things like uh, the Andromeda galaxy, but the Andromeda Galaxy has unfortunately set already. But the fact that it's able to see this, I think, is pretty cool. Um, it's not something that you would generally expect uh, from something like this. Uh, definitely not with this kind of sensor, um, without any exposure stacking. Of course, there is a lot of uh, chromatic aberration, but it's not necessarily important since this is not an astrophotography telescope. And again, that is something I really want to clarify. This telescope is purely for those who are interested in observing, uh, people who are interested in even uh, landscape photography, animal photography. Um, if you were to take this to a mountain, it's extremely lightweight. It actually comes with a little bag as well, which I will show you here. Um, it's extremely handy. It has a little phone holder here as well. I would show you with my phone in it. However, my phone is currently what's recording this video so that would kind of go against what I'm trying to do here. But anyways, um, it's a very versatile telescope. I was pretty impressed by it. Um, a lot of people say that, oh, it's not good just because it can't look at deep sky objects. But the, in reality, you're not going to be able to see deep sky objects with your own eyes unless you have like a 13, 14 uh, inch telescope. Um, other than things like the Orion Nebula and the Andromeda Galaxy, you really won't be able to see it. So this telescope here, I do think it's pretty cool. Um, it brings the digital technology in with the traditional astronomy, kind of combines it in there together so you can both take pictures and observe manually as you would as a beginner astronomer. Um, so I would say this isn't, of course, it doesn't have the best optics. But like I told you before, this doesn't really matter given the fact that it's not an astrophotography telescope. It's a telescope used for space and for landscape. Um, and I do think that it does the job quite nicely. So let me know what you think in the comments. Of course, keep in mind, this is your traditional telescope. 
I think it's a very cool design. I think it looks really neat. It's very handy. It's not heavy. It's extremely lightweight. Uh, the battery lasts a super long time on this charger. Um, so I have I have nothing bad to say about it except uh, I do wish, hopefully, if Beaver Lab does watch this video, it would be really cool. I, I would like to see what you guys could do um, if you were to perhaps make a go-to telescope. Um, one kind of like this, but sort of the unistellar design, something like that. I do think that would be really cool if you can make a, a astrophotography telescope like that. Um, because this telescope is, in fact, pretty cool. I really like the design of it. Um, and I, I find that it would be pretty handy for several different occasions, uh, despite what a lot of people say on the internet. I initially got into astrophotography just by looking at things on the moon. I think this is definitely going to be a good uh, doorway to those who want to begin their astronomy journey because things like this definitely excite people. So let me know what you think in the comments. I do think it's a pretty cool little telescope. Um, I'm looking forward to uh, see what Beaver Lab does in the future. Um, so again, yeah, please let me know what you think and leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. It's a pretty cool little telescope. I have a link to uh, buy it in the description below if you are interested. If you are interested in purchasing it, uh, so yeah. I uh, hope you guys have as clear of a sky as I have right now. Of course, it's going to start raining again soon, but let's hope for the best. Clear skies and have a good night, everyone.